In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take Ultimate Addons for Elementor and its login widget and create something similar to what you can see on screen right now. So if you're interested, let's take a look at how we can do that. Before we do, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Paul C and I'm here working with Brainstorm Force to bring you a series of tutorials on how to get the most out of Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified as soon as new content is added. Now I've logged into the dashboard of WordPress and I've created a new page and opened up Elementor ready to create our new custom login page. So the first thing we need to do is just add the Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor login widget. So I'm simply going to search for login and you can see there's our login form. We know it's Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor because you can see the UAE in the top right hand corner. Drag and drop that onto our page and we've now got our login form set up. Now we can go through and configure the look, the styling, all the different features we want, how we want it to operate and so much more. So let me just take you through all the different options we have and then we'll take a look at styling things to make sure everything looks in keeping with our overall website design. So let's take a look at the left hand side and some of the options we have available. You see we've got the form field option. We can choose various different things inside here, whether we want to have a field label and how we want that to display. So you can see currently that's set to default, but we can choose custom options, at which point that opens up all the custom options we have to set up the username labels and the placeholder, and the same for passwords. We can control the input size, we can set up to remember me option, and we can also have the Ajax form submission. This just means that we don't have to reload the page any form that's submitted via this will just do it on the same page with no refresh. Just gives a really professional, seamless look and feel to your login form. We also have the option then for none, and we can disable that. You can see that just gives us our normal fields with no labels whatsoever. We do still have the Remember Me and the Ajax form submission options. So you can choose what you want on here to make sure it's customized exactly the way that you want. For this example, we're going to go back to custom and from there, we're going to remove the labels, but we're going to leave the placeholders there. So we're simply going to remove these options and you can see now that clears those out and leaves the form elements, the form fields with exactly what we want placed inside there. So it gives a nice, clean, seamless look to things. You can also use dynamic tags if you want to. So if you're using Elementor Pro, you can leverage the functionality of dynamic tags to pull this information in if you wanted to. So it's great. We have those options inside there. Next up, we have social login. So the social login option gives us two different options. We can enable the Google login and the Facebook login. And this just means you can use your Google account or your Facebook account to log into the website. This gives you a nice seamless way of letting users log in without having to remember usernames and passwords, just logging in through either of those accounts. You can simply enable either of these options. And from there, we can then choose exactly how they work. Now you do have to set up a few different things either with Google or with Facebook and there's great documentation which will be linked in the description to show you exactly what you need to do. I've already gone ahead and set up my Facebook account and put in my relevant details and as you can see once I enable the Facebook login option we now get a Facebook button and this will us allow us to simply log in through Facebook. Let me just give you a very quick example of how easy it is to use the Facebook or Google login option. I've set up Facebook on this particular example, but the Google option works in pretty much exactly the same way. And you can have either or you can have both to give options to log into your site. I'm going to stick to the Facebook option, but the Google option works in exactly the same way. All we need to do is click on the Facebook login that will then log us directly into the dashboard or wherever you set up to redirect to after a successful login. And that's how easy it is. First time you do this, the account will be created for any user that uses this particular login method. And other than that, it's a seamless operation to move forward to log in using either of those options. As I say, all the documentation for showing you exactly how to set all this up is available. The link will be in the description below to both of those articles to help you get through the process of making sure that you've got your Google and your Facebook accounts in line to be able to use this feature. Now, if you enable the social login option, you also have some extra tools available to you to manage how that all works. You can see we can send an email on a successful user login and that can be sent to the user, the site admin and so on. And we can set up exactly what goes on inside there. So underneath the send email, you can see we can send to the admin, to the user or to both. So this will confirm there's been a new sign up using that account, etc. So it's really cool. We have that option depending upon what you want to use. You can simply select the options and whichever one works best for you. For this example, I'm going to leave that set to no. We can also 
hide the custom form so you may only want to allow social login and disable the need to log in with the username and password. If you choose that option, you can just select this and you'll see we remove all the login form and replace it simply with the social login icons. So again, really simple and intuitive. We can also select the theme that we want. We've got dark and we've got light, and it basically just gives us two different variants on the icon or the button that we're going to use to log in. So we're going to disable this hide the custom form because I still want to allow people to log in with their username and password. We can also apply a separator in between the various different elements. So if we enable the separator, you can see we can now just specify exactly what needs to be done. They can use one or the other, and we can configure and fine tune this separator to get exactly what we want in the styling and so on. I'm going to leave this out. We're just to disable that but it's there should you want to use it and again you can see really easy to use then we've got the button option so we can control things like the login text so what we want to write on this button so we can just say please log in for example we can change the size of that and styling is dependent upon whether you want to use the styling inside the widget or you may be applying global styling as part of elementor pro and that's where the example button that we're using right now, that's where that styling is being pulled from. But you can override that by using the styling options for the button. Then we've also got additional options. And this is where we can set up how we want the form to work once someone actually logs in. So you can see we've got redirect after login and redirect after logout. And these options are perfect for controlling exactly what happens when someone successfully logs in or out. Once you enable those, you can just simply choose exactly where you want that to go after the preferred action. So if we want that to go to the normal WordPress dashboard, we can set up the link for that inside there. So what we need to do is put in wp-admin like so, and that will then redirect that through after we successfully log in and take us to the page that we want. And the same goes for the redirect after logout. You can simply drop in a custom logout page, whatever you kind of want to do. You have full control over those options, which is awesome. Then you've got the option to enable or disable the lost passwords. You can see we've got a link there that'll take us through to the lost password form. If you want to disable that, you can simply uncheck it. It removes it from your form. Simple as that. You can also change the text, and again, you can use the dynamic tags if you wanted to as part of Elementor Pro. We can also specify where this links to. So by default, it's going to go through to the normal WordPress lost password page. But if you wanted to create a custom one, you could do that and then choose the custom URL option. Simple as just dropping in the custom URL. Again, you can set up link options. You can use dynamic links, all those kinds of really cool things. So you can get as creative and as custom as you want by using these additional options. For now, though, we're going to set that back to the default and we're going to leave it as it is. You've then got a logged in message. Do you want to display or hide that? Again, entirely up to you. And then you can control some options like the alignment of your additional options and the colors and the typography. So some really useful, simple things inside there just to make sure you can customize this login form to meet exactly what you want for your site. Now, if we take a look at the styling options, you can see we've got a range again of options inside there to choose exactly how this whole login form and the various different elements look on our page. So we can control the row gap, the column gap, the social login, top spacing and so on. So you can fine tune this and you can see easily just tighten things up if you want to adjust the label if you're using labels on there and the social login spacing as well. So we can get really granular on exactly how we want all of this to look and feel. You can also go ahead and style the form fields and you can see you've got all the controls inside there. Social login, we can configure that, the alignment and so on, any border radius. And then we've also got the button, which we can fine tune and override any theme styles that may be set up if you wanted to. And then the final option are the field validation messages. So we can style the way they look. Okay, so we've seen what we can do and we can see how we can use it. Let's take a look at creating that form we took a look at right back at the beginning of this video. So you can see how we can pull all these different features, pull them together to create a final end result that looks great. So the first thing we're going to do is just lay out the overall page. We're going to put a background in there. We're going to center. We're going to animate our login form and make everything look really cool. So the first thing we're going to do is select the entire section. And from there, we're going to configure that we want this form to be placed in the middle. So it looks good on all kinds of devices. To do that, we easily come over into our left hand side, into our layout section. And from there, we're going to set the height on this. We're going to set a minimum height and we're going to set this to 100% VH. In other words, it's going to take a look at whatever device it's on and it's going to put it into the center of that. 
Column position, middle is perfectly fine. A vertical line, we're going to set that to middle as well. And there's our form placed into the middle of the page. Next step, we're going to come to our style section. And from there, we're just going to set up our background. To do that, we're going to say we want a classic background and we're going to choose an image to use. So we'll just choose an image from our collection. It's part of our website. And we'll choose this first option and we'll insert that. You can see that now drops that into the background. We'll quickly position this just to make sure everything looks exactly the way that we want it to. Once we've done that, we've now got a great looking background inside there. We're going to do one more thing, and that is we're going to put a little bit of a background overlay over this to give some separation. So we're going to come to our background overlay. We're going to just choose black as our main color or close to black as we want. So we'll say we'll have the black color on there, and then we'll just adjust this to Adjust it to about 33%. Okay, so that gives us some separation, but obviously our form looks a little bit terrible at the moment. Now the easiest way to make this form look the way we want it to is to make it slightly smaller and then we can style it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this section again, come to our layout section, and from there, we're gonna set the width to be 550 pixels wide. This is gonna make sure that it now sits in the middle and looks great. Once we've done that, we now need to go through and just configure and make it all styled nicely. To do that, we're going to select the actual section itself or the column itself. Now we can configure the way you want this to look. So we're going to drop in a little bit of padding inside there just to make sure we have a nice element of white space around it. And speaking of white space, we need to come to our style section. And from there, we're going to set our background color to white. And already it looks a lot better than it did. But we still need to do things like brand it, adjust the spacing and all those kinds of cool things. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is simply come down to our border option. And from there, we're going to set a border radius of something like 20 pixels. That gives us some nice rounded edges around there. And that's looking good already. We're going to come back and choose our widget. And we're going to just adjust a few things on here. So we're going to open up the row gap ever so slightly just to give us a bit more breathing space. Around 16 it looks pretty good. Quite like that. We're going to come to our button. And from there, we're going to come in to set this to be justified. So it gives it full width. Now, at the moment, we don't know who this website's for, so we could do with some kind of branding. What we're going to do is we're going to just drag and drop an image inside there. And from there, we're just going to choose the image that you want to use, which is going to be the logo. And you can see it already looks considerably better. Let's add a little bit of space at the bottom of that just to give it a little bit of breathing room. And we'll get in there. We'll get in there. Okay, so we've got the basic form laid out. We've got all the styling set up. The next thing we want to do is put a little bit of a drop shadow on there, and then we're going to animate this just so it all looks pretty cool. So to do that is very easy. Again, we're going to make sure we've got the column selected, and from there, we're going to come back into our border option, and we're going to set a box shadow. So we're going to choose the box shadow option. We're going to up the blur on there until it raises it off the page quite nicely. Now you can't see it that well because at the moment it is quite light. So let's just bump that up so you can see what we're doing. So you can see now we've got this drop shadow on there. It's all looking quite cool. You can see we can adjust the spread on there, the blur, whatever we want. So we're gonna set that so it looks off the page and then we're gonna drop the color down, make it a little bit more transparent so it looks a lot more subtle. Okay, so we're on the home stretch. The next thing we need to do now is just apply that little bit of animation just to make it look a little bit more eye-catching. Now, Elemental makes animation effects really, really easy. So again, we're making sure we've still got this column selected. We're going to come to the Advanced tab, and from there, we have Motion Effects. What we can do is we can choose exactly what entrance animation is going to be used, if one's going to be used at all. And also you can control this based upon the devices being viewed upon. So you can have different things set up for desktops, tablets, and mobiles. We're going to keep this really simple and just set an animation for this. And we're going to choose this to be bounce down, sorry, bounce in and down like so. And you can see that bounces in. If we want to adjust the animation delay or make it slower or quicker, we can do that by using these options, but we're going to stick with the defaults for now and we'll just click on update. And that's our new custom login form created. All that's left to do now is test this out just to make sure everything works the way it's supposed to do. So let's just open the page up. There's our animated form. Everything is set up. We can choose to log in with our email address and password. We've got the remember me option. We've got a custom login button, our lost password, or we can log in with Facebook. So let's give this a try. So there's login with Facebook, and you see, it takes us straight through into our dashboard or whatever we set it up to go to. And that's how easy it is to create your custom logins using Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. That's how we can take the login widget from Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor and get creative with our login forms. 
Hopefully this has been an interesting video and opened up your eyes to some of the things you could do with Ultimate Addons for Elemental. Don't forget all of the applicable links are in the description below so if you want to check anything out you can find the information there. As always if you like this video and you'd like to be kept up to date when new content is released please hit that subscribe button and smash the bell icon to be notified. My name is Paul C and until next time take care.